Um, to everybody, my name is Peter Curl, I'm the Grand Master of the Grand Lodge of Freemasons in Western Australia, and I'd like, like to welcome a very special guest this morning, Patrick Gorman, MP for the federal seat of Perth. Yes, my, my electorate boundary is actually about five, six metres that way. Uh, you are just outside of the federal electorate of Perth as we sit here in Thomas Street. So you're sitting in foreign territory. I am. Uh, <laughs> but uh, welcome, and uh, one of the reasons that we, uh, we, we thank you for coming along um, and actually doing this, it's good to see that you're very active in getting community groups and, and looking at community groups and and uh, finding out what they're doing. And uh, we really do appreciate that. So do you actually want to let us know what kind of groups you get involved with or I suppose everything is a politician? Yeah, like the electorate of Perth is incredibly diverse. So we've got um, you know a higher than average number of pretty much any sort of group from the number of branches of political parties to the headquarters of uh, lots of organisations. If you were across the road, you'd be, you know, your headquarters would be, and indeed it used to be, I understand, yeah. in the electorate of Perth. Um, bowls clubs, uh, all sorts of things. Uh, and we've got a lot of what they call town teams, which is this great new sort of movement of little community organisations pulling together business, community groups and residents to sort of improve places like the East Perth Community Group who are sort of doing a lot of place activation. So I just I just like to get out there and see what people are saying. And um, obviously in terms of the Freemasons, you have um, charity shops on Beaufort Street um, in the electorate. You've got uh, sort of res you know, residential and aged care uh, assets in the electorate and uh, I thought it was worth coming down and having a bit of a chat. Well, it's great because, and one of the things that we like to brag about, and while you're here we'll do a bit of bragging about it, is our charity. No stuff. politicians ever brag. <laughs> that um, I think it's, it's got a prerequisite, isn't it? Um, the, we, we have a, one of our main causes in Freemasonry is charity. And apart from actually our membership, um, building up their character and helping them out, but nearly every Freemason is taught that charity is one of our core beliefs. And for basically just under 3,000 members that we generate across the board and all our, our things, you mentioned some of the homes and uh, villages and uh, Masonic charity outlets, that we probably contribute about between one and one and a half million dollars to the West Australian community um, a year. And that can vary, but most of it's actually derived directly out of our membership or through our Masonic care uh, villages, we provide a lot of social housing as well. And it's amazing, people just think that we're behind the scenes, we're a secret society. Mm. So you coming along and talking to us is, um, is uh, a great help. And we appreciate that, but uh, I'm sure you see that all the time. You will get to see a lot of people that do things, that do the hard yards and never get any credit for it. Yeah, you, you do. and. Um I think the great thing about a lot of people who do that charity work or to run community organisations that have far greater impact than just the balance sheet of their finances is that they don't do it for public recognition. They do it because they actually want to see their community thrive. And that's everything from the Inglewood Bowls Club where, you know, they're not, you know, they're not a financial powerhouse, but they're a community powerhouse. Um, and I think that's true of so many organisations. And um, I also love seeing the behind the scenes of stuff. So I've, you know, get out there, go through the Forest Field Airport link as it's being built, uh, get to see the behind the scenes of that. Went to a tour of Perth Arena, got to see the behind the scenes of actually how they put on those huge shows and now I get to see the behind the scenes of the Freemasons. And um, I, I don't know, maybe it's uh, maybe it's been uh, less exciting than people might have thought. But <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's, everybody calls us a secret society. Um, and I've been out there and I've been on the radio as well and I've tried to tell people we're not a secret society. If we, if we are, we're not doing a very good job. Um, we've got a big square and compass on our building. We wear Masonic rings, we wear shirts, we've got car stickers, we've got shops with the symbols on them, and, but we're universal across the world. And when we were talking about charity before, we just had a uh, podcast with the Grand Master of New Zealand and they contributed the brethren that raised the money from their own ranks in New Zealand to our bushfires. And they've given Western Australia, uh, the Grand Lodge, $6,000 to go towards local um, support for the victims of bushfires. We also had a order based in America give us 10,000 US specifically for Western Australia as well. So we've also contributed to the national uh, appeals through the salvos. We've just given them $25,000, but we're looking also to contribute probably the same amount to some local, particularly local enterprises to make sure West Australians get it. And I probably do speak a bit out of term sometimes, but as you'll probably realise that I have thanked all those brethren on behalf of the citizens of Western Australia 
for their contributions because they don't give it just to Freemasons, but they give it to Freemasons as a vehicle to get out to the community. And that's probably very similar to what you do as a politician. I think what we've seen over the last sort of four or five months is that uh, that recognition of the value of community and people coming together and you know, that value that we have of you know, loving our social interactions with one another in person, which I know many organisations have had to uh, defer, has been a, um, yeah, it's been an interesting time as people sort of realise what is really truly important to them. Um, I'm going I'm to be a little bit cheeky. I'm going to ask. So a lot of organisations and indeed the parliament is sort of going through this thing of sort of going, how do we change post-COVID? How do, what's the lessons you learn? And uh, is there any chance that uh, the Freemasons might uh, be opening up your membership a bit more, uh, dealing with some of the criticisms around female, mem- you know, lack of female members? Um, well, we'd, personally, I'd like to welcome interest from free, from women as well. We do have women involved with our organisation. Our own CEO, um, if you, you've met, is... Uh, ML is one of the best people uh, I know. And, uh, you know, she's a great advocate for Western Australia when she does her national roles as well. And... Um, yeah, runs a tight ship. But, but we appoint the best person. Now, on behind the scenes, uh, most of our staff, I think around um, a lot of, a majority of them are females. But when it comes down to the ceremonial side, there are Masonic organisations for females. If there's a massive groundswell in Western Australia, we had thousands of women want to come and join Freemasonry for the right reasons and looking at the principles, then it's got to be considered. And it's in the Eastern States, there are several Masonic orders for women, we used to have... I always hate it when Western Australia is behind the curve, yeah. so let's... Uh... But in across the board, in, in what we do in Western Australia, how Freemasonry is going, I think we're going extremely well compared to other Grand Lodges around Australia. Um, they're all suffering because of COVID-19. We haven't met since the 17th of March. Yeah. I put a blanket ban on all meetings. Um, a lot of our membership is fairly senior. Mm. And a lot of it are actually people that have... have uh, had a good family lives, their wives have passed away, and they use it as a social network. Have you found other ways of connecting? How are you sort of c- keeping in touch? Because I think people really have missed that person-to-person connection. Well, the younger yeah. members are actually driving it, like a lot of Zoom meetings. Yeah. We're doing these podcasts. We're doing these quite regularly. But the older members um, are missing it. But they still, we have a network which we keep in contact by phone. And we also do that for also the widows and families of people that have passed on to make sure they've always been included, there's always somebody there and no one's been left behind. And it's all part of our, what we do as Freemasons. Yeah. It's always happened, COVID-19 no, or not. Leave no one behind. I think that's yeah. a pretty good universal humanist value that everyone can doesn't get always, behind. It doesn't always work. No. There's obviously, it always slips through the, yeah. the cracks. But uh, Now, I might um, I might ask, I think that last, the last thing, and this is something that I've thoroughly enjoyed learning today, is that you and Kim Beasley have a, a, a long-term rivalry that goes back some 30 years. Yes. Um, yes. And what did you do to our dear governor? Well, he wasn't the governor at the time. No, I know. Um, he was, uh, it was interesting. Uh, there's a bit of family history involved, not, not personal family. But the um, in 1990, I actually opposed him uh, in the federal election. And I actually took him to preferences for the first time. So I made him actually do a bit of work. But <laughs> he was, uh, I think he was Deputy Prime Minister and Defence Minister at the time, and you were nipping at his heels. <laughs> yes, and the whole idea was to keep him occupied. But uh, I'm no longer involved with politics, um, and obviously... Uh, Neither is the officially, governor. Uh, he's still a mentor to the Premier. Hmm. Um, and I think most people do need mentors for a start. Yeah. And Kim Beasley is a very smart individual, um, a very pleasant individual, um, we've had a bit of rivalry. There's been a bit of angst with us a one, couple of times, obviously, which happens when you run against somebody. But um, we had a, a very pleasurable campaign um, and I actually got criticised by my own party um, for actually going around and thanking him for a decent campaign. And when I got back to my own party room on the night of the election, uh, some senior members actually tore shreds off me. Oh, God. See, that's, what, that's what people hate about politics is when it kind of so, just yeah. goes too far. Um, and... Yeah, Freemasonry does it. We have Freemasons that are on both sides of the political fence. And a couple of generations ago, um, there was a lot of them. And they would they could argue the point across the chamber and try and destroy each other. They step outside, they go to a lodge meeting, 
and it's all forgotten because you don't talk politics in a lodge meeting. Yeah. And you can have that. Mm. Freemasons, you're in a close group, you know each other, you know the standards of the person sitting next to you. And, and one good thing, and, and I have always acknowledged this and, and through my, my family background, um, the politicians, basically people always think the worst of them. There's something one, some, one person does something wrong, it's all politicians are all the same. Yeah. And it's the same in yeah. Freemasonry. Yeah, if some, one Freemason does something wrong, it's all Freemasons. It's like the police force as well. Mm. One police officer does something wrong, you're all the same. And, and that's what I've always appreciated with politicians and anybody who works in the community, whether it's a Freemason, whether it's a volunteer, firefighter or anything else, they put their hand up and if they do a job, they don't have to really, should, they shouldn't have to justify themselves. They will get the support of the community. And a member of parliament that does the job will, irrespective of the national swing, it's unfortunate with our politics in Australia, with compulsory voting, you can get affected by national swings. Mm. But there is a core that once you do the right thing and yeah. you're happy that you've done the right thing, you can't do much more. Yeah, I am. Um... It's interesting. I'm, I'm, I look at like obviously the city of Perth has a um, council election coming up. That's a voluntary election, <laughs> um, and yeah, if I had to choose between, I'm, I'm a, you know, a fan of compulsory voting because I think it mean it, it it is the highest level of accountability you can have because you are accountable to every voter, not just those who choose to turn up. And it also, I think, has been a good moderating force on Australian politics mm -hmm. that you've got two major political parties that are kind of more or less in a, you know, in a very practical centre. And uh, that's why we have elections that are normally only won by 1% or 2% because, you know, we do have, everyone has a say. Um, and so I, I recognise the concerns about, um, uh, in, you know, requiring people to vote, but ultimately I think it's actually served our country really well. I mean, we're, we're, democracy. we're only 120 years old as a democracy. Like, you know, we've got a long way to go. But the same, same age as the West Australian Grand Lodge. There you go. So, so you, you are, so you, you are, uh, when did the Grand Lodge come into existence on the Not, day of Federation? Or? Uh, no, 1901. 1901. So, yeah. so, so, so but, but also, and I should point out too, is the way we're talking now, um, one of the things in Freemasonry is we're not allowed to talk politics inside a lodge room um, or religion. They're, they're the two things that we can't talk inside a lodge room, um, which I think is great, which That's means good. that yeah. it doesn't matter if you have a different political view inside a lodge room, it doesn't yeah. count. So uh, right, but well, it's good to have an opportunity to talk to you like this. So great to chat to you. Physically great. inside a lodge room, no. but we're not in a lodge meeting, so we can get away with it. All right, well, uh, well, <laughs> I can't be kicked out of the Freemasons. You probably can be, hopefully, that uh, <laughs> hopefully I haven't got you in any trouble. Thank you for the opportunity to talk about some of your charity work and uh, to learn a bit more. Thank you, and all the best for the future, and thank you for the opportunity, and uh, thank you for coming along, and we wish you best for the future. And thanks to all your members for all your charity work. Great. Thanks, Patrick. Appreciate it. I'd shake your hand, but I can't. <laughs> thanks. <laughs>